Welcome everybody to the Super Joe Pardo Show. It feels like forever since I've done an intro for the Super Joe Pardo Show because it probably has been forever at this point. Uh, I'm I'm Joe Pardo, and I am happy to be here today with a guest. Uh, it, you know, I don't have I haven't gotten to do many interviews lately. Um, it's been a few weeks since I did the last one. For anyone who doesn't know, I've been like hyper busy, hyper focused over at indiepodcasters.com. So if you want to learn how to uh, learn to launch, grow, and monetize your podcast with me, uh, <clears throat> go over to indiepodcasters.com or specifically go over to indiepodu.com to get in uh, to our program and work with, uh, with me one on one every single week. And get to uh, launch your pro, you know, launch your podcast, and figure out all the tech stuff, figure out all the the creation stuff, the launch stuff, all of the business side of things. Figure all that out. Go to indiepodu.com to learn more about that. Anyway, last week we wrapped up um, Icon Six, uh, which is the Independent Podcast Conference Six. We did it virtually, unfortunately, but fortunately. And uh, for anyone who wasn't there, I was uh, I was dealing with yet another. Uh, if you've been following along, I had two <laughs> terrible ear infections this year, uh, this summer specifically, which uh, really sucked because my ear was was like throbbing on the first day. So, but fortunately, I had Amy J and Carrie, uh, Eric, both carry the event for me on Saturday, and I was able to push through on Sunday because I just didn't have as much pain in my ear. So it, it worked out pretty well, and I am very, very appreciative of them for taking over the hosting, uh, the hosting responsibility. So somebody that uh, was actually speaking at that event has been on uh, the IndiePod Daily Show. If you don't listen to that show, you should go check that out, IndiePodcasters.com. Uh, has been on that show twice uh, already, and I wanted to bring her on here. I was on her show. Uh, it was an OMG marketing i'm looking for a, a, a nod i think it's or, or, or was it omg po, the omg podcast with jamie palmer i believe that's it now i'm wondering if she's frozen because it's looking like she's not moving at all down oh no, no no she's not frozen okay so uh anyway it was uh it's 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 been a lot of fun it's always fun when i get to have a chat with this uh with our guest here and so without further ado, please give me some super claps wherever you are right now. I need a super warm welcome for our guest, J Super Jamie Palmer. What is going on, Jamie Palmer? How are you not, doing? Not too much. How are you? I'm rusty, apparently. <laughs> I hear ya. I hear ya. It's been a... It's been a... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's been I a decade. I don't it has been a decade uh, already here in 2020, and yeah. Uh, so yeah. So Jamie, for anyone who d isn't familiar with you and your your company, uh, give give a brief overview about your you know what you do with your company and uh, and how you got a little bit about how you got there. Yeah. So uh, my business is actually 17 years old this month, and um, I I know crazy. Congratulations. Even, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm a digital business strategist. So I run a group program called Business Ecosystem Builders where I help people monetize, launch and scale and systematize, you know, one course, one membership, one signature product over the course of a year. And so we take people through, you know, three phases on how to get the foundation in place. Um, how to go and market that. And then once they have the systems in place, how to scale it. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Um, I actually started my business as an agency back in college. So we started with web design and then I added in social media marketing, went back to school, got a master's degree in leadership and then uh, decided, I don't know, three or four years ago that I really enjoy more of the coaching and strategy side instead of like the done for you implementation side. Um, and so now, like I said, we have the business ecosystem program, which is really a hybrid. There's really nothing else out there that's like it. It's like done with you, high touch group coaching. <laughs> um, and it's, it's really just like helping you and keeping you accountable and moving you forward. Because one of the things I share all that because 
Um, one of the things that I realized in my agency when we were doing lots of social media marketing for people is that there's often this massive disconnect between um, social media and then like what is the next action that somebody is supposed to take, right? Oftentimes people are not marketing with a singular focus. They are like so scattered in their marketing efforts and their tech doesn't work or, you know, they'll have one look on social media and then they'll go to visit somebody's website and there'll be a different look and then they'll get an email from them and it'll be a third look. And so nothing is in like, I noticed that there was a ton of issues with integration, right? Like it wasn't clear, there wasn't a comp, comprehensive, cohesive look, feel experience for the client, right? Or the potential client. And so that creates a really big disconnect for people as they are going through your process. And so um, I think one of the one of the reasons why I bring this up is because your technology, your branding, your strategy, your social, it should be woven together like a vibrant thread. It should all work together to help you get to that next level in your business. And when there's holes in that, you lose people along the way. And I'm seeing um, so much of that <laughs> uh, in the online space because many coaches and courses, like they want you to always be buying into that next thing, right? When it's like, okay, take this, you know, Facebook ads thing. And then they don't talk about the funnel aspect of Facebook ads, right? And so it's like, okay, well now buy into this other funnel thing that we have here because you need a funnel if you're doing Facebook ads. And so it's always yeah. more of a, like a linear, like a start and finish. And to mm -hmm. me, as I mentioned, marketing is an ecosystem. Like everything you do should continue to feed and grow and really like, you know, help your business grow. <laughs> Well, sort yeah. of a long-winded answer to your question. No, a little, a little bit, but it's all good. It's all good. I, <laughs> I, I can appreciate it. But well, there's a lot there as far as understanding that, like, hey, they're, um, you know, I think sometimes like people want to compare themselves to, to companies that have a lot more, right? They have a lot more time. They have a lot more resources. They have a lot more people, and they have a lot more money to be able to have a diverse look at different, you know, different ads and different uh sections of site of pages or or divisions of companies to to be able to to market it in a way that people uh, get it and understand it because they're they're pumping that money out uh to make that happen right like yep. it, you can't just you can't it's it, you can't compare yourself to that because uh you you likely don't have that money time no. team no. uh international presence and oh i don't know like at least a decade to a, a century of uh a, you know brand recognition right well <laughs> over I, generations I mean, yeah totally but even like i ran the marketing department for a 5 million dollar design build kitchen company okay and they had a 500,000 dollar marketing budget OK, and when you look at a five hundred thousand dollar marketing budget, you think, oh, man, that's a lot of money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for trade shows, for this, for that, for the other. Yeah. And so when you think about the average entrepreneur. Right. So even if you're making six figures a year, right, they say you're making one hundred thousand dollars a year and you're taking ten thousand of those dollars and reinvesting them into your marketing efforts, you know, a good agency whether it's a Facebook ad agency or a done for you social media agency or whatever, typically starts at a thousand dollars a month, <laughs> like at a very, very, very minimum. And so yeah. I think oftentimes people forget to, just as you said, they don't realize how many dollars go into the creation of brand awareness. Cause as you start to grow, when you get into that multi-million dollar company range, that, it, yes, you want to have strategic marketing where here's the next step, here's the next step, here's the next step. But it's also combined with brand awareness, right? Yep, so yep. It's, it's blending versus if your business isn't at a million dollars yet, you want to make your, pro your product hyper profitable by acquiring leads at the lowest cost per lead. Yep. 
Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, to, to, you know, to go along with the, the $500,000, like, and like you said, with the, like, just the trade shows alone could cost forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 for one show. <laughs> right. So, so there's a good significant chunk of your budget and you, you only did one show for probably four to seven days. Right. You know, uh, and then to man it and staff it. And, you know, if it's not local, then it's hotels and this and that and the other. Well, right. I, I was it's talking about all all in, but I guess depending on where you're going and how much you have to ship to it, depending on where it's at. Like, yeah, it, it, you could be talking 100, 150,000, yeah. uh, depending on how many people you need for it and all that. But I, I was saying on the small end, yeah. you know, 40, 40, 50, maybe 60,000 for everything all in, like getting yeah. the boost. Yeah, and that's all that. fair. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean the trade show rabbit hole. I could go crazy oh, on yeah. because we, <laughs> when I worked with the kitchen and bath company, you know our booth setup, right? If we were like in one of the premier locations, we would bring an entire kitchen. We would bring mm. an entire bathroom. We would want to showcase our latest and greatest designs, right? So it would be like, let's build a mini kitchen for oh, this wow, yeah. or let's build a little, and that was that was not part of the mar marketing budget, but you know, I don't think people realize like the difference between having like brand awareness marketing and then marketing with a singular focus that's really geared towards getting people to make that next step and next commitment, that next step and that next commitment. And it's rampant <laughs> in the <laughs> online space because it's, it's, you know, there's this OMG, I got to post something today. I didn't schedule anything out. So it's 5 PM. Let me just throw something together and whip it out. And the problem with that is it's like, you're not strategic in your marketing. Cause you're like always behind the eight ball. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just don't do it. You know, right. and, and that's and that to me is like that's one of the worst things you know you could have is like, hey, we have like w follow us on here, 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 and here, but you go there, like, like maybe one of them have actual some kind of post within the last like month or two months, and the rest of them are just like, eh, hey, two years ago we had a post. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like okay, and there's no interaction and engagement, and and that's why it's like sometimes it's better to just focus on the one, and you can sign up for them right and claim your name. But then don't advertise it. You know, don't don't say follow us on Instagram. It's like there's nothing on Instagram, right? Or or yeah. there's nothing recent. It's like oh, it's been a year since we posted the last picture. Like you you couldn't find the time to take one one picture. Like well, it gives a bad subconsciously whether you're saying it or not saying it. Subconsciously, you're saying to your prospects like, hey, I don't take my business seriously. Which is right. not a good first impression that you want to make. Exactly. So I'm not, again, you should totally be signing up for those services, claiming your name, claiming your spot, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to advertise that you're on those platforms if you're not actively engaging and, and posting to them. Agree. Are, you, are you disagree? Oh, okay. No, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Like claim your name, but like my formula that I always suggest to people, right? Because oftentimes people way, 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 way overcommit themselves, right? Especially yeah. if it's just you or it's you plus a VA. Um, oftentimes people are like, okay, I'm going to do a podcast and a YouTube and a this and a that. And I'm going to post on every platform and I'm going to do whatever. And it's like, you just, you just open up a marketing business in your business, <laughs> you know, you just, right. <laughs> right. And for me, content I, creation business. Right. I'm just like, pick one piece of macro content, pick a blah, like pick whether you're doing a YouTube or a podcast and yep. then determine like, okay, what two social media channels am I really, truly going to focus on? And just focus on those two, you know, um, it, it, it's like, fine, you can repurpose your stuff elsewhere, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it to the fullest extent. Instagram is a great example of that. A lot of people yeah. will post on Instagram, but they never engage with anybody else. And like, that's the whole point of Instagram. So it's like, sure, post there, but don't expect crazy results if you're not working the platform, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, 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 the way I always look at it is from a perspective of at least if you're if you're sending if you're going to send people there, right? There needs to be stuff there, and it and it might not be um, it might not be the best stuff, right? It it might not be like the greatest, like oh, we you know, professional shots and things of that nature. Uh, but it, but at least you know, like I said, like make sure you're you're posting to those things that you're you're sending people to them. Uh, but generally, like I, I like like you said, pick one and and yeah. really just hone in on that one. 
yeah. um, the best that you can. And 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 you know, I think the the easiest way to to do that, if you haven't, is set some kind of a schedule and and uh, you know, just like hey, once if it's once a week, it's once a week. Like not every every company has to post every single day on every single platform. No, especially if it's Facebook. Like Facebook don't care. <laughs> like they're not going to show your post pretty much to anybody anyway. So it's it's more about like when people search for your company and that's the thing that comes up and they see oh there's some reviews there and like hey they're posting once a week or it's only been like four or five days since the last post not like four or five months you know yeah. those are the kinds of things that i'm looking that's what i meant to get out so yeah. so it's like when people are searching for you what are they finding and and like how like what what are, what's there right if you uh if if you you know, don't post once, but once a month or every couple of months, then that's not going to look good when somebody's Googling you and that Facebook is like the, in the top three results for your company. And it's like, oh, well, they, <laughs> they had, they responded to none of the reviews and they have almost no posts there. Yeah. I mean, I had a client, I don't know, a couple of years ago in my agency and we were running ads for her. And I said, look, person, she was an e-commerce business and she was doing roughly a quarter of a million dollars between Amazon and Etsy. And she opened her up nice. her own Shopify store and was like, I want to make more money on social media, like from my social media and on my own platform because I don't want to keep paying them. And I said, okay, I'm happy to run ads for you, but here's the deal. If you don't post on your own social media because you only have 100 likes, you're going to have an issue, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course... Sure enough, we were running ads, ads are going great, people are clicking through, yada, yada, yada. But when you run ads, people look at your Facebook page, right? And so she hadn't posted in over a year. And so she would get comments on her ad like, are you still in business? Because you haven't posted on social media in ages. And so I think what people neglect, just like what you said, it's like create higher quality content at a consistent frequency, yep. which doesn't mean doesn't mean it needs to be daily. It could be two times a week, every Tuesday and every Friday, you push content out and that's it, right? And so whatever that rhythm is that works for you, do that. And keep in mind, what is that next step you want people to take, right? Because oftentimes we'll have people who will just post on social media with no call to action around what you want people to do next, right? Or the alternative, this happens to me a lot with my clients, is you'll have like two or three call to actions. <laughs> like <laughs> I want them to do this and this and this and this and this. Is like people can't process that. Yeah, I, you know what? It, it is tough. And again, they, they're not, it, it, you know, people like to look at the examples again that they that they are used to. Like, oh, well, if Disney can in, integrate like, you know, everything into a phone app and and create this like whole world that you have to like log into and like book, you know, advanced dining reservations and and what ride am I going to ride six months from now, <laughs> you know, and, and know what park I'm going to be in and all that yeah. stuff. It's like, yeah, but most people, well, first off, most people aren't figuring that out because they're still just showing up to the park and being like, I'm here. Like, what do we do? Like, yeah. you know, how does this work? Uh, which is terrible because people were like, uh, as, as as a friend of mine, Len, uh, has said, like, people will research the heck out of like a, a $500 dishwasher to get, the, right. to get the best one. But they'll spend 2000 you know, $3,000 on a Disney vacation and do like almost no research and just show up and be like, oh, I thought this was like a cruise. You just show up and do, you know, bop around and do your thing. Like. Yeah, if you want a bad time, <laughs> like that's how. Yes, but you know what? Know what's so funny about what you're saying there? What's that? Is that that's because Disney has amazing brand awareness. Like yeah. you go to Disney and you have an amazing time. Like that's what they portray, right? Yes. They don't talk yep. about like, hey, you should be doing a little bit of homework around what rides to go to and when so you don't wait in line for hours or any of the other like cool Disney things that they have kind of behind the scenes when you go on one of their vacations they don't that's not because they have such great brand awareness yeah. they don't need to do that right and they, again almost 100 years of of you know business to, right. to lean on right generational right. and things of that nature where people will look past those those things 
and still want to interact with it, still want to be, you know, right. be involved and still want to go even in the middle of a pandemic or right. whatever's going on. Right. And I think, and I think to your point with like the dishwasher and all that sort of stuff, right. I always kind of crack up laughing because I am a huge fan of like, this is going to, I'm totally going to geek out for a second. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of cast iron pans. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love cooking with cast iron. I love vintage cast iron pans. Like I just, I'm obsessed. I cook everything, like almost all of our bakeware, cooking ware, everything we cook within the house is, is cast iron. So I always laugh because if you go on Amazon and you look at most reviews on cast iron pans, they're it's horrible. Bad. Yeah. Cause right. you can't put it in the dishwasher, right? Well, you can't put it in the dishwasher. You need to dry it on the stove, right? Otherwise mm. it'll rust and you need to season it every six months maybe once a year right most people don't understand that so i always like die laughing in the comments where they're like this thing rusted after two reviews and you're like you want to be like well how did you dry it because if you didn't either fully dry the whole pan or put it on the stove for two seconds on high to dry it is going to rust it's cast iron so if you yeah. leave it wet to dry in the dish drying rack, that's exactly what's going to happen. And so the other piece of this, right, is, is making sure you're, <laughs> you and your client, your ideal client, you're on the same page, right? Because there is some education that often needs to happen when it comes to your marketing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that's, and that's the thing is like keeping that as simplistic as possible for people to understand. And, right. and again, I, I think people get caught up in the idea that like, hey, well, these other companies, that's how they're doing. It, and they're super big. And it's like, yes, they're also much older. They have much right. more bigger budgets. They have much more people behind it. Right. And they have more department and they have more research, right? Like where they can do A-B testing to specific people that are like, hey, I like this type of stuff. So we can send, you know, we could send out a significant amount of mailers, emails, uh, you know, run commercials in specific areas, uh, you know, uh, radio commercials in specific areas. Like they can do all these things because they know like they're, they're gathering so much data back uh, from those people to know like what those people like and, and how they can do better uh, at specifically marketing things. In fact, it's uh to 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 keep on the the Disney train because anybody that's you know watched the show for a long time knows the the not only am I a big Disney fan but I've had a lot of Disney people on in the show in the past and uh, I forget who it was that was talking about this um they they ran a test at Disney where they like. They were like, oh, we want to find everybody who's come to our Star Wars weekends. Before, like, Star Wars was in in, in Disney parks, they had, like, Star Wars weekends. And they, they found they, – they whittled it down to, like, I don't know, like, 18 people or something like that that had went to every single Star Wars weekends and stayed in the parks for those weekends. They didn't just, like, drive in from local or whatever. And they, they whittled it down to the point where – they uh they were like, well, we know these people are staying in our in our park on the last weekend of Star Wars weekends. Let's put let's just let's just leave them some plush in the in their room for when they come back and surprise them. And it was only like at that point, I think it was only like six rooms worth of people or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. they like lost their mind over the fact that like Disney, you know, was is paying attention enough to be like, hey, we noticed that you like come to every single Star Wars weekends this year. And here's something, you know, here's here's a little gift. And you know, it's just left in the room. It's it's kind of creepy <laughs> to a point, but you're in their world, you know? It, it's their data. But that's that's the the power, right, of doing really really good marketing, right? Yep. So like, you know, when I was speaking at your conference for Facebook ads, we were talking about retargeting ads, right? And we were talking about how we can use data to leverage right and yep. and i would say that's knowing your clients really really well which most people do not do nearly enough homework on from my perspective you know you should be able to rattle off like what is actually keeping your ideal client up at night what motivates them what um excites them like on a really deep level right and that's yeah. disney at its finest understanding that these people are obsessed with Star Wars, right? And that's knowing who's in their park and the things that motivate and excite them and, you know, are gonna keep them coming back. And so creating that really amazing experience 
is going to create lifelong fans. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. Right. And it's those, it's those little things, uh, you know, I, I, and I know Disney's trying to figure out that, that where's the, the creepy line. Cause it's like, you go in to see like a cat, like Mickey and Mickey's saying, ha oh, I just saw that you were, you know, on the, you have a ghost following you cause you're at the haunted yeah. mansion. And it's like, do we, do we need that level? Like, do like, and the reason he knows is cause you had the magic band, right? Like he yeah. knows you tapped in, uh, just like an hour ago to the haunted mansion. So it's, it's cool, but like trying to find that that middle ground of for sure creepy versus like fun. Uh, they get me, or they get the you know they get it. Though I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't even under, like they it would just be over their head. Like <laughs> you know, well, I mean that social dilemma documentary that's out on Netflix is very much about how you know Facebook, Twitter, all the big marketing aid you know data collection. Yeah. <laughs> social networks are using our data against us and or for us right or to persuade mm -hmm. us in one way or another and uh, i don't want to get political that's not where this is going uh, <laughs> just make that clear it's right, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's very interesting because they can they use our data just like disney's doing to influence us to make decisions one way or another simply through the news feed, right? Like we'll use Facebook yeah. as an example. If they know or see us commenting and engaging on something, they take that into account and then will show us ads or other posts from our friends in our following that have a similar opinion or a polarizing opinion, right? Yeah, like yeah. it kind of goes both ways, especially when you have a big reaction. One of the, um, a woman that I work with, I'm in her mastermind, and she has a very strong opinion on Facebook with a lot of the things that are going on in the world. And it's funny because she'll get the craziest polarizing comments, like way left, way right, way middle, like all over the map because her, her content so polarizing. And Facebook feeds into who sees that content. It's it's almost like they're playing God. Yeah. <laughs> like with the amount of people, like th th it was never really possible before to have this amount of people. Like a, I don't know what's on Facebook, like a billion people. Mm -hmm. You know, in a in their own world, uh, and 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 basically being able to, uh, you know, move the pieces around and and have you know encourage engagement. You know, because you'll see cer certain people keep coming up over and over and over again. <laughs> Uh, things like that, like it's it's crazy. Now, did you get to watch the social dilemma yet? I haven't. I've just I read reviews. Um, yeah. I watched the one that they had specifically about the whistleblower with Trump. I don't know, a couple years ago, that woman, and there was a lot of social media stuff in that as well. Hmm. I, I mean, I read a lot of books on that stuff. It's not really any surprise to me. I mean, I've been running Facebook ads for eight years now, so <laughs> <laughs> I know just how creepy you can be. I mean, back in the day. I, I could run an ad to one person, right? I could go on Facebook and grab your unique user ID and be like, hey, Joe Pardo, how come you haven't joined my business ecosystem builders program yet? I know you need my help because like I could run an ad like that. Um, and obviously they've changed that. It's a minimum yeah. of a hundred people now, but um, <laughs> it's just still pretty, pretty small. It's still pretty small. And, Cause and, if you and, hit it with enough money, like you're just going to keep hitting up those same hundred people. Right. It, I mean, and here's the thing, I, it, the level of creeping, it, I'm always shocked that people are freaking out about any of this stuff because it's like Google, <laughs> And Facebook and YouTube have been collecting this data for years from yep. you, right? And, and you yep. know, the one Apple is probably the only one who really doesn't share a lot of your stuff like that out of all the ones that are out there. But it's like they, you know, they use that to your advantage, right? <laughs> in some in some ways, but in other ways, it's really not. It's, it's, it's used to your disadvantage to persuade you in one way or another. I mean, if if. <laughs> If you have the time, I highly recommend watching the documentary about how Trump beat Hillary mm -hmm. in the election. And anybody who says that Facebook ads don't work, I'm saying go watch that. Because one of the things that happened is he outspent Hillary Clinton on ads. He ran like $3 million in ads and she ran $50,000 in ads. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the ethics behind how he ran ads because it's questionable what he how they ran the ads. However, they 
absolutely convert <laughs> when works. used properly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, and, and and you know something like that makes a lot of sense from a from a targeting, you know, because geographically you could you know really get really granular with who you're going to be targeting those ads to and yeah and all that. So uh, yeah, it's um. Which Next level absolutely creepy. played a part in, in winning, <laughs> Next level like, creepy, losing the popular right? vote, but winning ultimately. So, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. So, um, so yeah, so I I definitely I, I gotta I gotta get uh, the time to watch that as well as the social dilemma. Uh, Jamie, so uh, for anybody who's just getting getting started or wants to get started with their uh, building their their like one course one program yeah. like how how can they get in touch with you what what should they be or actually no what should well before they get in touch with you what should they be focused on before they start reaching out to somebody like you or um you? Yeah, I would say proof of concept. I, I the majority of people that I work with are experts in their fields. Like they've been in business working one on one for a while, and they're just ready to make that jump to go from one to one to one to many. Um, that is what I did in my business, and it gave me a lot of advantage over people who just went from. I want to start my business and create a course. I have this wealth of knowledge that I can then tap into, and share in a meaningful way because I already have a process and a system for how I want to do things. I think a lot of times people are like, I want to create a course and they go into this whole idea of creating a course and then they're like, oh man, I have to codify my knowledge and I don't know where to even begin because I haven't necessarily had the working experience to work out the kinks, right? So you can make your best assumptions on how someone's behavior is going to be or what's going to happen or the stumbling blocks along the way. Like for me, this is my third year running my business ecosystem builders program. Year one, I learned so much. I never realized there were going to be so many mindset issues that came up along the way. And that wasn't something that I was actively addressing in my program. And so I'm like, oh, okay, now I got to add this. And so I think it's a, you know, have some expertise, <laughs> right? And have some tried and true um, practice and reps with whether you're working in a corporate environment or on your own. So like understand what you're getting into when you're creating a course or group program or a membership. And then, you know, the second part is you, you got to start before you're ready. Um, I don't recommend just going out and building the course or the membership right away. I want you to get paid to build that. <laughs> uh, so pre-sales is a huge thing. Um, but yeah, those would be the two, that would kind of be the, the couple together advice that I would have. Cause I think, um, I'm launching a big black Friday special this year. And one, one thing that I see all the time is that people like how many people, like, I, I don't know if we're live or not. We are live. Yeah. I don't know how many people are on, but I would love to know whether you're watching live or on the replay, if you have an unfinished course, because almost every person that works with me has an unfinished course or an unfinished membership that they wanted to start, but never finished. And so we're, I'm all about finishing. Let's get, the, <laughs> get to the finishers club. Let's focus. Let's follow one course until successful. And let's like rock that baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 no, I love that, and there probably is quite a few people out there that, uh, that they're like, yeah, yeah, I want to start a course. I want to, I know I should do this thing, and and I might not know all the tech, but like I start bringing it, you know, putting it together, piecing it together. Um, yeah, I, to me, I, yeah, I, I think that if you're, um, especially if you're, you're trying to get to that place of working with, you know, a lot of people all at once, uh, you know, a program of, of sorts. I mean, we have, I, we have one with the Indie Pod University, mm -hmm. uh, which actually your talk on Facebook ads is a part of, uh, and there's like 150 uh, plus hours of video resources there for podcasters, plus like weekly coaching sessions and, uh, workshops and uh, all the all the past conference videos. So there's a, is a ton of a wealth of information uh, in information in there, information in there uh, that you you know you'll have access to. And uh, but I'll tell I'll tell you, Jamie, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but like the uh, some of the courses that, like that I that I built uh, that I put in there, I had built them was back in like 2015. 
So yeah. like for a totally different membership site that I had built and then I kind of I like I did a bunch of like I did like four or five courses and then sputtered out on it and and ended up shuttering it but I kept the courses and put them out for certain people that like um like would be like hey Joe how do I do this thing like you know so I would sell, just sell them for like 30 40 bucks like here just t take this course and it'll walk you through step by step on how to do the things that yeah. I'm doing um, versus like, here, here, here's like the monthly fee. Right. And, and just, you know, I'll keep pumping courses into it. So now like, but now we have, I have this wealth of, of videos and resources and all that and pumping all that into one, one place, uh, is, is been really helpful for me to grow the revenue on IndiePod. That's why, like I said, at the beginning of this, this episode, I've been spending more time over there doing that than focusing on the Super Joe Pardo show or even the TV show, which is going to be getting probably a rebranding prior to doing the second episode at some when some point some, probably at this point sometime next year we will we will get around to doing the second episode but uh but yeah i you know i um it, you know I, I think it's 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 really important for you to at least start organizing your thoughts and organizing ideas outlining and figuring out what your you know what your courses what your workshops what your that kind of stuff would look like. Um, with that said, like I, you know, haven't done all of that in myself. I, I have some things, but not everything uh, as much as I would like. But I, but I, I'll tell you, I took a, I took a page out of your book, Jamie, and uh, I have writing days now. So in my calendar, so like I can do those writings and uh, whether it's, you know, sales copy, um, I have a creation day, that's Monday, creations day is Monday. So social media stuff yep. is on Mondays, uh, pictures, getting all these live streams scheduled and all that stuff. So that's creation day. Friday is writing day where I, I do, you know, sales copy and um, fl start flushing out posts on past episodes of, of uh, like IndiePod daily so that they get better seo and things like that so i so i'm i'm, I'm making the commitment to uh to, to make that a bigger part of what i'm doing and eventually once i get that kind of smoothed out and straightened out i will come back to the super joe pardo show and uh the top of super joe pardo and and kind of start to work those as well so uh so thank you for that jamie i I, I i needed i needed that kick in the pants to uh to, to really outline like my days uh, a little bit better to get more accomplished th th in things that like I'm really slow at, yeah. <laughs> which, which is the writing part specifically, but yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think oftentimes we entrepreneurs, we have this like imaginary dream world that we live in sometimes of what it's going to be like to run a business. And the fact of the matter is it can, you can get really, and I mean, I've been feeling this lately. I posted about this yesterday on Facebook, feeling really bogged down and like, I'm doing all this stuff for other people and moving their businesses forward, but I'm not doing a lot for my own business, right? Like, what am I doing to move my own business forward? And creating a really awesome brand and a really awesome business means you have to actually work on your business to get it to where it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> and that requires you carving out time during the work week, not like I'm going to be a superhuman and work, you know, 90 hours a week. That's not realistic. Um, I'm going to take a day and I'm just going to do things for my own business. And it's, it's game changer. Like when you can treat your, when you can treat your business, like your best client, that's when the needle moves. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And, 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 uh, to go along with that, you know, don't forget to, to treat yourself as well. Right. Like, uh, don't forget to work out. Don't forget to go sit out in the backyard or, or, or do something, you know, whatever makes you feel good in the process. Cause, um, you know, like you said, doing 90 hours and it, it, you know, in one week is fine. You know, when the chips are down, you got to always swing the bat, but that's not a that's not a plan right yeah. that's not that's not no. something that you know that's that's in the last minute uh th you know things are are going and and i have no other choice but i have to get this done right that's that's the 90 minute you know or 90 hours yeah a week well, thing right that's not that's weeks. not next week's plan that's not two no. weeks from now it's like three weeks from now like it's not know, sustainable long term no no, 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 no. Probably no, it, two, three weeks at the at the absolute most, and you would be still dead, and you won't have a family <laughs> because all right, you're like, well, where what happened? What which happened is not why you became an entrepreneur in the first place. You became an entrepreneur to have right. more freedom, right? And right. like, here's the, here's the thing: like, 
there is a season of sacrifice when you're in the building mode of your business, right? There is a season of, I gotta have to make a few sacrifices. I maybe every week for the next six weeks or eight weeks, I'm gonna get up early. Um, and this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Cause I have a book that I'm writing and I have a massive program that I'm launching. Every Ooh. week I'm going to get up early and from five to six every day, I'm gonna spend an hour writing or I'm gonna spend an hour, whatever it is. And that's a bit of a sacrifice, right? Cause like I normally get up now, I'm not sacrificing my self-care routine. I'm still doing that, but I'm getting up an hour earlier to make time for that. And you can do that, right? Because a little bit each day adds up, but that's a season, right? I'm going to do that for this season so that I can pay myself dividends with these products that I'm creating long term, right? And I think oftentimes people have this, this belief that, oh, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to launch a course. And the first time I launch it, I'm going to get a thousand or you know 1500 people that are going to sign up. And it's like, it's that stick to itiveness to do the launch, make adjustments, relaunch again, do the launch, make adjustments, launch again, where you're going to build a hyper successful business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, like I said, I had a, a course program prior, right? And, yeah. and I kept the, fortunately, I kept all the courses. Heck, I have the whole website archived. So if I wanted to relaunch that, I totally could. But, you know, it, 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 it took those lessons, took those courses I built, and it took how I built that site and put it together and packaged it into something that I already have going with literally thousands of people that are paying attention, right? Yeah. Or paying enough of attention to be able to market to. So uh, that, you know, it, it's important to, to keep, every, you know, all that stuff into perspective and, and remember that like, you know, again, you could go through all those processes. It might not work out. You you put it back together, you know, start over, put it back together, repiece it back together and, and then try again and yeah. uh, relaunch it. Right. I mean, I, I did that already. So, so, uh, a few weeks ago on the show, I announced, Oh, we're, we're, I'm launching the super circle, right? Like, well, the super circle, the reason I haven't done a follow up on that for anybody that's paying attention, anybody paying attention, <laughs> uh, you know, is cause I, I meshed that into the indie pod university because the two different marketing, uh, arms of it just was not, it wasn't going as fast as I, I, I wanted it to. So brought it to one and all of a sudden it started to move forward. So right. I'm uh, making more changes and, and keep it and keep it going. Right. So yeah, Jamie, how can people get in touch with you? How can they work with you? How can they, uh, how, how should people reach out to you? Yeah. I mean, you can find me on Facebook. I'm Jamie Palmer, or if you want to follow any of my social stuff, you can find lots of um, value driven content. There I have a podcast and a YouTube that I do weekly. Um, so I'm outlier marketing group on social media, and you can also find me on the web at outliermarketinggroup.com as well. Awesome. Awesome. And you absolutely should. Uh, every time we get to talk, it's always, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jamie. Likewise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, if you've enjoyed this episode of the Super Joe Pardo Show, please, please, please share it with the uh, the, the business entrepreneur person in your life. Uh, and you can go over to superjoepardo.com and check out more past episodes or 400 episodes. You, your, your show actually has like 300 and some episodes, right? Yeah, like 390, I think Ooh. we are at. <laughs> I got I got to get back on the horse here for more often. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. get I'm gonna get lapsed. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you everybody for for watching. Uh, I don't know if we'll be back next week, but uh, we'll we'll be back in probably a couple in a week or two, um, three weeks. I, I have some things to, to go over. So anyway, <laughs> take care, everybody. We'll uh, we'll I'll I'll see you real soon.